This is the third video in the series of videos showing you how to draw free body diagrams. In this problem, we are going to consider a flat surface. Here is the flat surface, like the table. An object on this table, there we go, with a big dot in the middle of it. As a reminder, that's where all forces start. And there is a force applied on this object that is not parallel to the table anymore. A force applied that, let's say, goes in quadrant one like this. Let's say that's FA. And this force will make an angle theta with the horizontal. How are we going to show that angle? Well, we are going to draw a helping x-axis through the center of the object. Helping lines must always be dotty. There we go. We're going to label that x as in the x-axis. And now we have a reference for the angle theta. So there we go. This is my angle theta. This object will accelerate on the table to the right under the influence of this force. So we have acceleration again to the right. How are we going to consider the other forces? Well, we are going to have the same exact forces like we had in the two previous diagrams, the two previous videos. The force of gravity acting vertically downwards. There we go. Label that mg. We have the normal force going vertically upwards. Since the table is horizontal, the normal force must be vertical. There we go, uh, vertically upwards. In green here, label it little n. And uh, the table is also rough, so there will be friction. Friction is always parallel to the surface in the opposite direction of motion. Since the object accelerates on the table to the right, the force of friction will be parallel to the table here in blue. To the left, we are going to put an arrow on it and label it little f with an index k. Now, as you can see, you have four forces. Two of them go in the vertical direction. One goes in the horizontal direction, but one goes at an angle with respect to the horizontal. Anytime we have vectors that go at angles with respect to x or y axis, we have to, as you very well know from velocities, from projectile motion, we have to resolve. So we are going to resolve this force Fa very carefully. How do we resolve a vector? Well, we draw perpendiculars to the x-axis and to the y-axis. Well, at this time, we don't have a y-axis. So in order to do that, we are going to have to draw our helping y-axis which is going to include the two vertical forces already, but we are going to extend that in such a way that we can now see that we also have a vertical y-axis over here. So now, back to resolving FA. From the arrow of FA, we are going to draw perpendicular to the x-axis. Very careful, that's perpendicular again. And another perpendicular to the y-axis. Once again, very careful, that is a perpendicular. So it looks like the two forces will be one of them from the center of gravity of the object to the right, put an arrow on it, and the other one will overlap the normal force being just a little bit longer than that. According to my diagram here, there will be another force a little bit longer than the normal force in purple now. So here is my applied force in purple and the two uh, components of the applied force. How are we going to label them? Well, according to the sine and cosines in this right triangle, this horizontal component of Fa will be Fa cosine theta, theta. It's the adjacent. And the vertical component is going to have to be, this one here is the same as this one, which go with, goes with the sine theta. So that's going to be Fa sine theta. Now we have all forces going in the two directions. Two forces on the x, and one, two, three forces on the y. Let's do a magnitude check. So we know this object accelerates on the x axis, on the table, to the right. So therefore, the x forces must be unbalanced in the favor of the one going to the right. 
Uh, on the other hand, the y forces, the three y forces must be balanced. So let's start with checking the magnitudes of the y forces to make sure they are balanced. Well, we have one force going downwards and two forces going upwards. In order to balance them out, the one that goes downwards, mg, must be exactly as long as the sum of the two forces going upwards, which is the green normal force and the purple Fa sine theta. It's obvious that it's not, so I am going to change this by making mg much longer. How much longer? Well, let's measure. The normal force here is seven centimeters. The component, the vertical component of Fa is eight centimeters. Seven plus eight is 15. So I need to go down 15 centimeters on the y-axis all the way here. And now this is my force of gravity. Remember, all forces are measured from the center of gravity. So now mg over here is exactly as long as n plus Fa sine theta. I can say that they are balanced. Um, now the other forces, the horizontal forces, which are Fa cosine theta and little fk, the force of friction, they have to be unbalanced because they give me, they must give me a net force in the same direction as the acceleration. The acceleration is to the right, so the net force must be to the right. Therefore, Fa cosine theta must be greater than Fk. And indeed it is because if you measure them, you're going to see Fa cosine theta is 10 centimeters while Fk is only 4.5. So therefore, they are unbalanced in the favor of Fa cosine theta. So the magnitude check has been completed. Now we can consider again as a fast, fast summary of this. This object was acted upon by a force that <clears throat> had an angle theta with the horizontal in the first quadrant. In order to consider the free body diagram, we had to consider the other forces, which were the force of gravity, the normal force, and the force of friction to the left. Then we had to resolve Fa. And once we did that carefully, we got Fa cosine theta for the x component and Fa sine theta for the y component. And finally, we had to check the magnitudes along both the y-axis and the x-axis. And and Fa sine theta added together had to give us the mg, which we had to adjust because mg was too short. We made it longer, and then Fa cosine theta must be greater than Fk because the object accelerates to the right, so we have to have a net force to the right. And this is now finished. Thank you.